I need to cut the giggles. I cannot drink coffee again, evidently, at this point. We're going to have <laughs> coffee, and we're not really sure what's in that coffee. Huh? I swear. I don't think there's anything it's funny. It is Colorado, but... Hi everybody, it's Franny. And this is Heidi. And this is our third international Coffee and Cars. So before we go too much further, happy 2019 to everybody. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Hope you're all having a great 2019. Good start. It's kind of cold out here, but um, right. I hope it's awesome wherever you are. So grab a cup of coffee. I actually remembered the coffee this time. This yep. is our third one, and every time I've forgotten. So um, I'm actually drinking Gavelia coffee. This is not sponsored by Gavelia. I bought this myself. And it's decaf because we're filming this about 8.30 at night. So um, grab your cups of coffee because it's going to be morning for you, I'm assuming. And so... Um, Warm up those hands and let's get started. All right. Okay, so our first entry is Scott from Indianapolis. He has a 1965 VW Beetle and it's he's kind of built it out a bit. It's got a big wow. engine in it, uh, 2054 cc engine, so pretty big. And he's got dual Dells on it, so dual Delorto carburetors on it. And it's a really, really pretty color. It's kind of a, a burgundy color. I like that color a lot. Isn't that pretty? Yes, I do. And he says it's a it's a it's a seventy one Porsche color, and I kind of recognize that, huh? Yeah, it looks familiar. Definitely. Yeah, it's really nice. So he got the car about uh, five years ago, and um, he spent a couple of years restoring it. It was a little bit tired when he picked it up. I think it was kind of red and looked like it had some serious yeah. mileage on it, but. Um, He's really done a pretty job with it. It's really awesome. And this is the third beetle that he has restored. Look how it shines. I know. It's really nice. Yeah. And then there's some cool details. So um, check out the, um, the covers on the headlights look really cool. Right. Isn't that neat? And uh, he also has some 356 gauges and things he put on it. So he was just going for kind of this vintage rally, rally look on it. It's got uh, five bolt hubs and on bigger tires and wheels and stuff. So I'll bet it gets up and goes. I bet it's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like he's in like a car show and yeah. some other stuff. So yeah, that's really well, thank nice. Thank you so much. Really appreciate hearing yeah. your story. Thanks so much, Scott. Thanks for your entry. Okay. All right, what's next? So next is Bill from Fredericksburg, Texas. He has a 2018 Porsche 911. It's the GT Silver PDK with mm. a host of other options. Wow, what a gorgeous car. Yeah. So Bill has wanted a Porsche forever. Porsche, listen to me. Porsche. I've been watching too many British guys Hi. lately. <laughs> He's wanted a Porsche forever. Over the years, he was able to drive several of them, and he was he was interested in a 911 from 1984, but um, it just wasn't um, financially wasn't the right thing for him at that mm. point in his life. So then, last summer, he decided to just go ahead and just buy one. He said that he was going to turn 70, and oh. it was going to be kind of a birthday present for him. So he had been researching them for years and years, and so he went to all sorts of different dealers. He finally found one that was close enough, but he ended up ordering it from the dealer that was close by. He oh, didn't okay. actually go to the showroom. Okay. So he made them an offer to get the vehicle, and lo and behold, three days later, he had a new Porsche in his driveway. Wow. He says that um, he freaks out his wife a little bit when he steps on the, gives it the beans. <laughs> <laughs> Gets so, up and goes. Um, but he was super excited that he never even had to visit the dealership and that they were willing to work with him. And he just wanted to let everybody know that it is never too late to own a Porsche. Yeah, totally. Beautiful car. Look at that. I really like the wheels, too. It's really pretty. Yeah, so, I really like what the a neat new, car. Um, yeah, the new look. look is very cool, huh? Right, and they still have kept the, the same look. So, really nice. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so our next car 
is from Michael from Birmingham, Alabama. So he has a 2011 uh, Boxster Spider, which is really kind of a cool car. They're really neat. I have a real soft yeah, spot for the Boxster and the Spiders. Want one yeah, of those cars. isn't that, that amazing? Was, that was one of the ones that we were debating about getting a 2011. Now, yeah. I'm assuming it's a 2011. I don't think that we actually had confirmation that that's what it was, I but that's it. I think based it's, on yep. the look of it, I uh -huh. think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, after he drove a friend spider to several on several parade laps at uh, Barber Motorsport Park, he was hooked. So that's kind of the way these things go. You just yeah. kind of like, oh my God! It just it really it really tugs at your heart. So came home and explained all. He said he came home and explained all the benefits to his wife, <laughs> right to the business, the relationship. You know, right, it's, it's it's gonna right. be a it's gonna be a solid plus in all. You know, win win. And uh, so um, after some persuading, he managed to uh, talk her into it, which is awesome. And after picking up the car, he attended uh, Porsche driving school again at Barber and uh, then attended his first PCA driver's education, DE, that weekend. And it rained, but he didn't care. So that's the picture. It's, it's kind of wet out on the track, oh, but yeah. he didn't care. Right, right. Um, that's awesome. So the benefits that he sold his wife on, and this is actually some pretty good, this is some good stuff here, actually, um, were the events that they attended, um, one of which was the Blue Ridge Boxster Summit, which is held annually in North Carolina. Oh, that would be fun, a bunch of Boxsters. Right, yeah, and really attended Treffen and, and other regional events. So he's got a really good point here about the benefits, I think, to a relationship. And it, sound, it kind of sounds super self-serving, but it's actually really true. One of the things about the Porsche Group that we learned is that you just meet the nicest people. You really do. Yeah. We have met so many of our best friends there, and uh, they're just wonderful people, and they go on these drives together, and it is a lot of husband and wife teams. It right. really is. So it's not just a bunch of guys in cars, which is great fun for the guys, but then a, a wife shows up and she doesn't have anybody to talk to. It's not like that. Mm -mm. Even the big events as well. So, um, And it, I think that Michael is fairly active in the PC. Yeah, it's, so he it is. It sounded like he had been doing a lot of stuff and, and well uh, and he got into it so that was the whole thing right, so now right. he's the co-chair and drives for the alabama chapter of the oh, pca right, right, and yeah. led a drive of the tail of the dragon in north carolina that's, that's pretty cool nice road yeah i would really like to go on that so that's great so you get to you get to meet all these people you get to mm -hmm. hang out with them you get to organize groups and all sorts of stuff there's just so much that you can do with it it's wow. really it's really incredible. I know the scenery is really insane, right. isn't it? That's North Carolina, I think. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and they have a son, 17, who also goes on lo local drives with them, and a daughter, 14, who says that she thinks that her first car should be a Cayenne. I like that uh, um, she recently informed him. Yeah. <laughs> She recently informed him. She informed him. him that that was going to be her first vehicle. Yeah, I think that's really fun. <laughs> so, uh, and it becomes a family affair, and you see a lot of a lot of uh, dads taking their daughters and stuff on these runs, yeah, and we have kids some. every, and it's great, and they all have a great time. Right. So, um, always, always super duper fun. So, Michael, congratulations on the Spider, amazing car. Love those things. Right. So enjoy it. Have fun driving. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great can... choice. That's totally. A, definitely one that, that uh, we would have liked to have had in our garage at some point. So yeah. Thanks for letting us look at it. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> So what's next here? So um, Sean, who I believe lives in Colorado, just based on the tags on his car, um, has a 1964, is it Spots or Spets. Spitz? Spets dune buggy. And um, I love this. It features a surfboard rear view mirror. If you look at it closely, it does look oh, it like does. a surfboard. Oh, it does. It's very cool. It is the 1915cc Volkswagen engine. So interesting story about this one. My wife and I tried to buy this car from a guy three years ago. He didn't want to sell it then. His plan was to restore it. We then ended up buying and restoring a 84 Fiat Spider. Oh, that's a challenge. Cool. Yeah. Um, three years later, um, in October, he called us. This is in October of 2017. He called us and said, are you still interested in the buggy? I said, perhaps. And <laughs> how soon do you need it gone? He just said, just come and get it. I need it gone today. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We got it for free. 
Wow. Can't beat that with a no, stick, huh? No, no. Yeah. That's awesome. It had been sitting for 30 years uncovered outside, so you can kind of see he's got some before and after photos there of what it looked like before. Mm. So um, there was lichen growing on the body, and the gas tank had been turning to, like, tar. Oh, we, we've worked on some scooters that were kind of nifty. Yeah, that's pretty like bad. That. We kind of know what you're talking about. Um uh, after a body off rebuild, we now have a fun street legal car. Yay! Colorado Tags. Yeah, said. and it looks so, awesome too. Yeah, guys did a beautiful job on it. Look job. at that. It looks like a lot of fun. Holy cow! So, yeah, that's really great. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. And maybe we'll see you around Colorado at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'd love I to see love that. Always love the local stories. That'd be super duper fun. Our next character is from Rich. He's from Georgia, and he has a 1981 Porsche 928. He also has a little YouTube channel as well called 4.5 Garage, which is kind of fun. So this is a family car. This is kind of a father-son story here. Mm -hmm. So his dad bought this car originally, and he uh, was his health was kind of weird, and so he wanted to go out and buy a car. And he got sign off from the from the boss and went out to drive. Uh, he was thinking of 944s and 928s, and he went out for a little bit of a ride. And um, there was a 944 on the road, and he was in this 928, and so he hammered it and went flying by him, and that's all it took. And so he really, really wanted this car. This was his dad, right? Yeah, this is that? his yeah. dad. Okay. <clears throat> so um, that was that was great and so they had a good time driving that car it was really awesome and then about 10 years ago his dad decided to offer the car to him so Rich got the car from his dad about 10 years ago and so for the last 10 years he's been slowly bringing the car back up a bit he's done quite a bit of work to it um, let's see he's gutted the interior and replaced stuff on the dash and that sort of thing do so a lot of interior work as well he removed the engine tore it down and replaced seals and all that sort of stuff that kind of goes it's 1981 so it'd been quite a bit electrical connections and such harness I issues and things worked on the suspension and the steering and the car looks amazing it really does and so he loves driving it and he especially loves taking his dad out for an occasional drive as well, which that must be super fun. So he also has three kids, and they really enjoy the car as well, and uh, they think it's pretty neat that uh, also that it was granddad's original car too, so that's mm -hmm. really fun. And uh, so, you know, this is the kind of fun thing about these cars is they end up just like our little 356. It, it's it's an heirloom car. Right. And it passes from people in a family, you know, and uh, it just it just takes on a whole. It's like it's just a member of the family. So it really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So he did a beautiful job on it. The car looks awesome. And Rich, thanks so much for your entry. And so glad that you're having such a great time with your car. And it's, it's a way you can kind of hang out with your dad as well. So that's really neat. Yay. Cool. So story. what do we got next, Heidi? Um, <clears throat> so the next person is Scott from Bel Air, Maryland. He has a Myers Manx and he doesn't know uh, approximately what year it is because it was missing the tag on it but oh. he actually had them come out and verify that it's either between a 1968 or a 1970 they're not quite sure <clears throat> a mix of early 1960s volkswagen type 1 chassis and suspension mm. king and link pin front suspension oh. rear swing axle i recently removed the original 1600 cc engine and replaced it with a 2332 cc engine wow with 166 horsepower jeez that's pretty holy serious. cow because the thing weighs like a four nothing speed transmission yeah when you oh think my gosh. about the the speed that a regular volkswagen beetle goes yeah that must um, be insane <clears throat> So he said, unfortunately, I don't have any exciting stories to tell you about the buggy since I only have owned it for four years. My Myers Manx was brought back to life after sitting outside for 30 years. Another 30-year-old wow. dune buggy. 
by the gentleman I purchased it from about four years ago. So he does have some of the before pictures mm -hmm. of the yeah, poor, thing. poor thing before it got restored. So the original serial number tag was missing, but it had been authenticated by Myers Manx Company. Oh, neat. It has the original fiberglass top, handmade rear window, and side curtains with zippers to lower the side windows. Oh, fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. All gauges, horns, and light work properly include high beam switch, four-way flashers were added, and also an under dash LED light added to illuminate the fuse box and floor at night. Oh, that's nice. Nice touch. Original front seats were restored and the seat frame modified to sit lower. I can only say that when I walk past it in the garage, I can't not look at it. So he can't just like do that number, right? <laughs> it just makes me smile. It's like having a fun size toy that I take out of its box every once in a while. The picture of me is with a first place trophy that was the only judge car show that I have taken it to. Wow. Winning the trophy was a total surprise. I went because it was a nice day. Aw, uh, that's a that's, that's a great story. Yeah, it's really nice. That's neat. How I'm fun glad is that? that um, such a good owner would um, take care of the car. And yeah. it sounds like you really enjoy the car. Yeah. And so it got really thanks nice so much, restored. Scott. I, I really appreciate your story. Great. And our final entry for this month is Stephen. He's uh, currently in the Philippines serving with the U.S. Armed Forces in Japan. And he has a 1966 dual cab microbus, which is really cool. Super awesome, actually. Um, it has uh, Porsche disc brakes on it and Fuchs alloy uh, wheels on it, which is really cool. And it has a rag top on it, which is really kind of neat. Wow. Yeah, yeah. it's really kind of sweet. So the car is in the Philippines, and the owner is his, is his, his wife's car. How cool is that? So he'd been looking for an early bus for more than 20 years, and it's just so, I'll bet you, it's, he said it's really hard to find one in the Philippines, I'll bet. I'll bet they probably just didn't last down there very kind of long. <laughs> no, but they did. Yeah, kind, of, kind of dissolved a bit. <laughs> All right, yeah. So it's a very rare find and very memorable achievement for him because um, there are less than five double cab buses in running condition left in the whole country. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's really something. And even more memorable because not only uh, that, but he gave this uh, the, the bus to his wife for a birthday gift. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? So um, he was still in Korea at the time, and during that time he acquired it, and he did not get to see the bus until um, a year later wow. after his tour. So that must have been a heck of a, a, a tough year, huh? Yeah, because he was just as anxious to see it as, yeah. as, as everybody. <laughs> sure, so, oh, yeah. that's great. So he, he said he was in the right place at the right time with the right luck. Yeah, and, um, those windows in the front. Yeah, I love those pop-up windows. That's so right. cool. Right. Yeah, that's got to be rare. I bet that's in, in a total conversation piece wherever you go. Right. So one of the pictures here has um, a scooter in the back, and it's a 56 Lambretta. A 150cc scooter, and they call it Luigi. 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 It's like so in adorable. Movie cars, in yeah. like the yeah, and yeah. it's white and blue. It's, it's adorable. Cute. And this thing is perfect for that. It's awesome. I love the wheels. The Fook wheels are great. Yeah, it gives it kind of a little bit of an edge. So, right. um, Stephen, thank you so much for your entry. That's awesome. Right. Beautiful, thank you for beautiful bus. That to me, uh, like like stat yesterday. That was awesome. I was like, can you get it everything that you need to get to me? And he was really great. He got right on it. So um, we were able to feed him in this, which is awesome. Yeah. So thanks so much for that. Right. Well, all right. That's well, that's I, I think that's a wrap for this month, huh? Right, right. So um, this was the January 2019 Coffee and Cars, and we're looking for your entries. So please definitely email us at the info at HeidiandFrainsGarage.com. We have the link right over here. So make sure that you email us just three or four photos. Um, and then what we really want to know you know of course are the specs like what year the car is where you live we only mm -hmm. need a first name um, what part of the country or what part of the world you live in and then just something special about the car like 
did you restore it and is it special to you because of that or or did it belong to a family member or is yeah. there just something about when you drive it, it it you know makes you feel zen or something just you know give us what's special about your car right we really look right. forward to hearing from yeah. you so um all right well thanks get those entries into us and um you know where to get us for 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 next time yeah. so it's uh coffee and cars is always the first sunday of the month right so we always try to publish it and make sure it goes out sunday morning right so we're trying to get your entries obviously within the next three weeks or so yeah so because otherwise we're cramming like we are tonight yeah <laughs> So, yeah, get those entries right in. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and um, shoot uh, shoot some comments down below. Let the people right. know what you think of their Definitely. car. Definitely. How fun is that? Start a conversation with them or have questions. Hopefully, they'll be able to answer yeah. the questions on that. And um, want to really quick thank our patrons as well for, for their support and helping us bring yep. you videos. Thank you very much. So, all right. Well, until next time, safe travels. Bye.